in politics, we often say it's not what you know that's important, but who you know. In Washington, D.C., we take this to heart. We have opportunities to see and be seen, to know and be known. And we also advertise our political connections with a certain local kind of decoration that is known as the power wall. Such walls are so common in Washington that even the Chinese restaurant down the street from the Computer Society has one. They show the owner in close association with the rich, the powerful, and the merely well-known. By looking at the wall, you're supposed to understand that the owner is an important person, and I suppose, by association, has powerful steamed dumplings. Recently, I stumbled across a power wall in the oddest of places. It was one of the first major computing labs on the Asian continent. The facility had one of the first computers in the region and is well known for its innovation. But in one of the older parts of the facility, I stumbled across a row of photographs of the famous, the powerful, and the merely recognizable who had visited the laboratory in the late 50s and early 1960s. In the middle of the wall was a photograph that I knew existed, but never knew if I'd had a chance to see it. It was a photograph of the Cuban revolutionary Che Guevara, shaking hands and looking at the control panel of an IBM 1401 vintage computer. The picture was unmistakably the Che Guevara we know from t-shirts and posters. We forget, of course, that he was a physician and that he was, in the early days of the Cuban Revolution, the Minister of Industry. He had come to the laboratory to learn more about computing technology and the role it might have in the developing world. He wrote quite movingly about how Cuba needed more knowledge in order to advance. He was there in an effort to build the Cuban economy from a almost entirely agricultural base to one that included factories and manufacturing. He wrote about how Cuba needed to acquire modern technology and undo the backwardness of the country. But he didn't seem to think of it as a truly revolutionary technology. Following the example of Marx, he seems to have believed that it was merely something to have improved manufacture, a way of holding knowledge, that it would not radically change the social structure of the society. Indeed, Marx had written that the only changes machinery made were largely technical and merely allowed a capitalist to exploit the workers more thoroughly. Marx did not live to see the computer, but he may have been right about the computing machines of the 1950s and 60s. During that era, we see the emergence of a literature that talks about information, about how computers process data and provides information to information workers who can then run the organization more efficiently. A Marxist might be tempted to look at that and see exploitation of the worker in it. But it would be more interesting to know what Marx and certainly what Guevara thought about the computing that has emerged in our age, the computing that works directly upon the social structure. They might have seen that as more revolutionary. This new technology works within a social structure and has the potential to modify the fundamental elements of social relations, position, function, and status. In a conventional organization, it has the ability to strengthen ties, but it also has the ability to work across organizations, to connect people with others who have the same interests, the same goals, the same ideals. And in the process, it can weaken conventional ties, including those ties that are established by organization, by geography, and even by family. At the end of the day, we are going to have to assess this technology and determine if it is indeed truly revolutionary as we have claimed so many times if it really alters the equation of what we know versus who we know. I'd like to have known Guevara's opinion on the subject. I think he would have been intrigued with it. I think he would have seen certain revolutionary potential. 
But I also think he would have been mystified about the uses we put to it. The fact that we record the minutia of our daily lives and the daily lives of our cats. The fact that we post events that mimic the ideas of others that are dangerous or silly or show ourselves to excess. Finally, I think he would have entirely been lost in that new art form, the selfie, in which we pull out our camera at a moment's encounter and take a picture of ourselves with someone who is important or powerful or merely recognizable with no further contact than that moment. So in the end, when we look at this, we're going to have to ask, is this a revolutionary technology? Have we changed the connections of society? Or have we merely found a new way to deploy the trappings of power? This is David Allen Greer. Take care.